Let's look at another practical example of working with a snare drum sound. We'll use Battery 3's mapping features to assign specific snare samples to different velocities, and using our ears to pick out the right snare for a given velocity range, we'll achieve an even more realistic sound. If you missed our first example of drum mapping, head back to the chapter entitled Constructing and Mapping Your Own Drum Kit 2. I've started with the pop kit loaded. The first thing we should do is have a listen to the multiple snare sounds that we have here. To my ears, snare rim L is definitely the hardest hit, followed by snare R and then snare L. Let's keep that in mind for now. I'd actually like to combine all these samples into a single cell, and then assign each of them to a velocity range, so that battery 3 can do the rest of the work. Since snare L is assigned to the key I'd like to use, I'll go back to the browser and just drag the rim L and snare R samples onto it. Now, let's look at how these were assigned in the mapping page. Let's zoom in using the horizontal zoom button. Let's also disable the trigger switch here, so that we don't keep hearing the samples each time we make an adjustment. The way that Battery 3 has organized these samples is into zones, and by default each of them covers the entire velocity range, from 0 to 127. This grid will be helpful in dividing these zones into three equal size pieces. Since I felt that the snare rim sample sounded like the hardest hit, I'll just drag its range to go from 127 down to 85. Next, I'll set the snare R to go from 84 to 43. And lastly, I'll have snare L go from 42 down to 0. There we go. Take a listen now. I'd say that sounds a bit more realistic. Let's add the humanize effect to the cell for even more realism. Just switching it on and leaving its controls at their defaults already improves the sound. One more thing we can do is have these zones overlap and fade into each other instead of just having an abrupt change from one sample into the next. Just drag the edges of the zones so that each zone overlaps and then move your mouse a bit inward to grab the velocity fade controls. There we go, that sounds nice. Let me give you another example and then we'll go through all the controls and settings available to us for mapping. Let's say that I wanted this ride to behave more like a crash ride when it's hit very hard. You've already seen a similar example in chapter 15, but this will demonstrate a few more options. First, I'll drop a crash sample onto the ride. Next, I'll adjust the crash sample's mapping to only kick in at very high velocities. I also don't want the crash sound to have too much of an impact, so I'll drag the low velocity fade up all the way. That sounds pretty good. Now let's talk about the controls up here. The low and high velocity fields allow you to type in the upper and lower limits of a selected zone or group of zones. Tune allows you to tune up or down specific samples in the cell. I'll actually do this on the crash sound, to make it match the darker sound of the ride that it's paired with. Next, there's pan. If I wanted both of these samples to be panned exactly alike, I could leave this centered, and then flip over to the cell page, and use the output panner to do just that. But in any case where you want both samples to have a different panning, use this field here. That kind of defeats the goal of making a crash ride, 
so I'll just reset the panning we just did. Apart from the samples you use, panning is one of the most important things you can do to make your drums sound real. Next, there's volume. You can use this to independently change the volume of the zones. And then there's root key. With this field, you can tell battery 3, the original pitch of the sample. The root key also defines the basis for pitch shifting. So, for example, if this cell was triggered over a range of MIDI keys, and tracking was enabled, this setting could be used to tell battery 3 which note in that range was the root key, and therefore how to go about pitching the notes. Here you can change the name of the zone. I usually leave the zones with the original file name, so I can easily search them up in the future. You can use the select zone via MIDI switch to have battery 3 listen for the velocity with which you triggered the cell, and then highlight any zones that were activated with the last hit. This is especially useful when you've got a lot of overlapping zones. Then, there's Solo Zone. This one's pretty simple. Any zones that are selected when you toggle this on will be the only thing you hear. I'll solo the Crash Sample Zone, so you can hear this. And then there's the Trigger Switch, which I already used in this chapter. Use it to enable or disable previewing samples anytime a zone is clicked on. And then lastly, there's the edit menu. One thing to note before we get into it, is that you can click and drag a box selection around zones to quickly select them. This is helpful to use with most of the edit menu's functions. I'll select the crash sample zone first. Here, you can cut, copy, and paste zones, as well as delete them. You can also use the Replace Zones function to swap out the samples you're currently using for another one on your computer. Next, there are the Set and Remove Velocity Crossfades functions. This accomplishes something a lot like what I did with the snare example earlier. First, I'll stretch out these zones so that they overlap in the middle, and then I'll remove the velocity fades I already have. Next, I'll select both zones, and then choose Set Velocity Crossfades from the Edit menu. And there we go! Velocity crossfades made instantly. I can easily remove these as well. If I want these zones to not overlap, I can leave them selected and use the Stack Zones function. And if I want to reset them back to the default, I can use the Reset Stacked Zones function. And there you have it! Simple yet powerful drum mapping in Battery 3.